Hey, this is Morning Perfect Base, and I hope that you are having a good morning. Ooh, I think we're headed into evening here in the game. So, uh, what I'm doing here is I'm building my perfect base. Uh, I'm going to work on it a little bit each day and see what happens after a couple of weeks. Um, while I do that, I'm going to take a lot of the news articles that I read, and I'm going to talk about them a little bit. So, um... Today, I believe I'm going to continue digging out this one side over here. I, I kind of popped in here for a minute. I know it's been a while since I've been doing this. The, that everyday bit is harder than most folks expect. So, um, I'm going to continue digging out over here. I believe the other day, um, I took down most of the trees. I dug a little bit here. This is going to be some pretty boring um, work, honestly. So uh, I lured some chickens in, I kind of went through the woods, found some chickens, found some seeds, kind of brought them over here to help out with uh, with things. As usual, I've kind of forgotten where the barriers are here, because I think this gap is supposed to be a wall at some point. Or is this wall supposed to be a wall? This wall's supposed to be a wall. There we go. So uh, the first thing I want to get into is, uh, it's called draining the swamp. We've heard about the $30,000 dining set that uh, housing and urban development uh, had Ben Carson bought for his office. Um, I, I'm the first guy in line to uh, to metaphorically string up the Trump administration. Uh, you know, the greed, the hypocrisy, the, the coding of the cynical elimination of their political opponents as uh, draining the swamp. But, uh, you, know, you know, the hypocrisy. And, and Carson's dining set seems tantalizingly uh, in keeping with that, right? But um, the story the guy himself puts out kind of makes sense in in that if you keep track of this administration as a bunch of disconnected individuals who don't understand how shit gets done in the real world of adult. Anyway, so the deal is is that he either had those funds or he was going to lose them, which uh, interesting. So he also said that the cabinet he was replacing was uh, dangerous, which, you know, it's an old cabinet. I guess that's possible with a cabinet full of shit. Anyway, so he was then given a catalog full of really expensive stuff, and then he delegated the selection of the cabinet to other people, and he signed off on the final product, allegedly saying, wow, that's expensive. So... There is an entire uh, Henry V's worth of leadership questions in there. Uh, but, oh wow, really? Just one shovel? All right. uh, there, was, there was literally a uh, uh, crafting table over there, wasn't there? But um, it just... He gave it back. But shouldn't the Drain the Swamp administration be angrier about a use-it-or-lose-it financing system which encourages waste? Uh, what mythical catalog was Carson looking at? Uh, is the government furnishing contract? we have a furnishing contractor that's just gouging us on this stuff? He still saw the cost and signed off. I, he runs the HUD, and it's not like Drain the Swamp is the policy of an administration which spreads through all branches of government. Like, he runs the HUD. He doesn't run the, the internal inspector general's office. Is that what it is? Uh, it's, it's a talking point uh, insofar as, sure, maybe there's a good reason for this. But, again, the administration says drain the swamp. Trump ran on drain the swamp, amongst other things. Uh, but there's not even any principled, articulated outrage about how this happened. There's just The, the response is... That's just the system. It's not my fault. It's, it's not about finding individual a fault. I mean, it is for some people who are dicks, but uh, for an administration which apparently has some sort of principled opposition to this sort of government waste uh, and institutionalized incompetence, they're pretty blasé about this. All right, let's, let's talk about actual corruption, though, okay? So whistleblowers are members of the government who report waste, fraud, and abuse. And when they do report these things, uh, they aren't always taken seriously, but one of the guarantees is that they won't be retaliated against. So this is a Daily Beast article. Uh, it, talks that, it says that out of 190 
whistleblower allegations of retaliation. They, they reported something bad the government was doing, uh, and then the government retaliated against them, gave them bad performance reviews, or got them fired, or whatever. Uh, only one of those 190s was resolved in, I say 190s, was resolved in favor of the whistleblower. I mean, that seems really low, doesn't it? I mean, and that's, that's, it's a low number, even if the Inspector General's office finds something, which is not by any means guaranteed. Sometimes these cases take years or just don't even get resolved. Uh, it's so improbable, I feel safe saying it's bullshit. Um, the article talks about Obama era missives, which uh, were unenforced. So Obama said, hey, fix this. Here's a program to fix this. And then he just kind of wandered off and did something different. Um, you know, admittedly, though, he didn't campaign on a promise of draining the swamp in a party which is notorious for its hatred of administrative incompetence and uh, waste. You know, his campaign doesn't hate civil servants. So it's a fascinating read, and it's got a pretty cool story about an intelligence agent who uh, reported and then got busted all the way down to the Inspector General's board reporting on retaliation against whistleblowers. Uh, I don't want to say Kafka-esque, because I don't get Kafka enough to really make those sorts of judgments, but um, <laughs> it is wild, and it's worth a read. So, uh, the other one is, let me see, a Tampa Bay Times article about uh, $2 million being spent on campaigns for politicians who are not running for office. Uh, we got dead people spending thousands of dollars from campaign funds that the law says uh, can only be spent on campaigns, political campaigns. I didn't know this. The Federal Election Commission has like $26 million budget and 45 analysts working on it. And that's for all the elections. All the elections in America. Um, you know, $26 million is a lot of money. But if you have two people that make $50,000, no equipment, no incidentals, uh, for a year, that is $100,000. 20 people is a million dollars to run for a year. So um, no equipment, no supplies, no other resources, just folks in a room trying to stop election fraud. Anyway, I, I'm kind of rambling, but it, it is illegal. It is illegal for politicians to use... Oh, there we go. Uh, political campaigns for personal causes, but they can donate to political causes. Uh, so, ex for example, if a politician were to go into lobbying, uh, stranger things have happened, uh, they can actually use money from their campaigns to aid in their lobbying career because those are political causes uh, that they are working on and furthering. Um, that is perfectly legal. Um, should it be? No. No, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. Uh, so anyway, um, dead people spending election campaign money. Money that, you know, average Americans gave them to get elected and, and to do things. You could make a case, I think a reasonable case, for saying, hey, look, these people wanted me to campaign on issue. I now lobby for issue. Therefore, the money's legit. And I think that's cool. I think that's. I think there, there's a reasonable case in there. Um, I think that that's probably the exception. I think that's a lot of steps to take with money that someone's given you for an express purpose and that you have repurposed. Um, and I don't think that addresses the the lack of political will involved in uh, reforming this system or tightening that up or putting some kind of. Um, Sorry, I just I just now realized I got torches in my left hand. It's weirding me out. Um, some sort of oversight on that. Some sort of yeah, that's not 100% legit. Like get a permission slip from some voters or something like that. I don't know. Give it back to the constituency. Uh, anyway, there's a lot of real waste out there, and I just it's just weird that this administration's response to you know a fairly straightforward government waste inefficiency issue is it's not my fault. It's not my fault. That's that's their message. Let's move on. Um, the cool thing is that that was like three articles. Uh, 
The cool thing is that there's this nanopore reader, completely unrelated, uh, that now it's a little handheld device. You plug it into a USB thing, and it can get 99.5% accurate readings of DNA. It can analyze DNA. Well, all right, it can't analyze DNA. It can collect a data set from DNA that it's given um, in a little handheld thing. And you need software to decode it, but just the, the Human Genome Project took like 13 years to do this stuff the first time we did it. This is the late 80s. I think it ran from George Bush across Clinton's era into to George W. Bush era, if that tells you, um, one, how long it took, and two, how I tell time. Um, all right, it's getting late. I got to go in here. Anyway, 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 but an interesting takeaway is that uh, this little device does not do analysis. It just um, runs electrical current across long strand DNAs. As I understand it, this is not my specialty. And it gives that data to ba -ba -ba, computers. So, and there's actual different software to read this. And, um, you know, the the software that, the most reliable software was like open source neural network software that required multiple reads to to get that 99.5% efficiency. Uh, I, I kind of say that just to say, hey, look, this is a cool technology. It's a big step. Um, but there's always a few more steps on it. You read CNN, they're like, magical thing, spit out your genome. And admittedly, we understand that news agencies don't have robust science corners. Um, they put out a lot of articles and not all of them get, you know, top tier science treatment. So nonetheless, nonetheless, I just wanted to kind of to pop in and say to, to nuance that that perception up and to say, hey, this is a cool thing. And it's cool within a context. Um, what do we got? Oh, yeah, no. As you know, I'm a cheap person. I buy my comics from Discount Bin. Uh, this is Disco Comics. Today I am reading Dead Letters by Christopher Sabella. Uh, and because I'm actually reading from the, the cue cards instead of just taking notes and then uh, freewheeling, I gotta, I gotta slow down a little bit. So I, I often cite my time working retail as a time when a lot of people came to me with their story ideas and I had to, I was paid to be polite and listen to those terrible, terrible, bad garbage ideas. And one of the recurring ideas in there is angels versus demons, heaven versus hell. Um, always the big idea, always the same big idea. Heaven help us is not original, is not good. It's, I mean, I think that angels and demons can be good for broad morality tales. It's like, hey, look, this guy's an angel. And you suddenly know a lot about, a lot about that person. Um, this guy's a demon, and you know a lot about that that person. You you think there have been so many stories which use those tropes that it bends around backwards, and then you're like, oh, well now it's either going to be an angel or that trope where it's an inversion of an angel who's kind of a dick. Uh, but anyway, heaven, hell, good versus evil, angels versus demons, they can be good elements, but they do not make good stories. Fight me, nerds. Uh, Dead Letters is about a good versus evil fight in purgatory between God's fucking incompetent agents and a criminally stupid, well, two criminally stupid syndicates of fucking idiots. And then there's there's our main character, this disheveled suited, morally uncommitted, self-looking out for generically neutral, reluctant, amnesiac protagonist guy. And it's not good. He's got unique power, so everybody wants him. But just despite some promise in the ideas and a play, uh, a pace which presumes rather correctly that I do not uh, have any emotional investment or investment at all in this series. Uh, no, I mean, the art, the story is mediocre and uninspired, full of recognizable shit you've seen before. A few glimmers of original stuff. The art is filthy and it's unclear throughout. I'm sorry, heavily stylized and veers regularly into the heavily incomprehensible. Um, it's just, it's nothing special. I mean, if I cared about the action that was happening on the page, I would be confused and frustrated. Uh, but I don't. So stuff happens and I accept that stuff happens. And after the two issues I got were done, they were done. So, um,. Yeah, dead letters. I just, 
There's a part of me which goes, there was something special in there. And there's another part of me which goes, nah, no, there really wasn't. There really wasn't. Um, <laughs> the colors were nice. That's it. So, um, all right, I'm going to finish up on this wall and then be done for the day. I think, wow, I got so much more done than I thought I would. The, the grass is really fucking me up here. I really thought, um, oh, okay, then spaz. Uh, I really thought that. Like, I feel like I've gotten far, but because grass keeps growing over things, I feel like I haven't. I don't know. Maybe it's just... Is my, no, my inventory's not full. I'm just not picking shit up for reasons. So anyway, I've cleaned up my workplace. I got my chickens in this coop. They probably don't even go in this coop. I'm probably gonna have to pull them out and take them somewhere else if they don't. I guess just walk out of their own volition sometime in the near future. Anyway, until I get a good sign-off, guys.